Namaste, welcome. This is a reading from the classic guide by Paul Foster Case. The Tarot, a key to the wisdom of the ages. This is chapter five, key one, the magician. Baith, Baith, B, value two, means house. The first thing about a house is its location, determined by survey, an application of geometry. In its building, architecture, geometry, adaptation of materials, and many other practical applications of science are involved. Time was when the whole art of building was called a mystery and was under the direction of the priests of the Thoth, Nebo, Hermes, Mercury. House building is part of hermetic science and survivals of this idea are preserved in the rituals, rituals of Freemasonry. Mercury is the astrological attribution to Beth. It represents both the planet and the God. Understand by God an aspect of universal consciousness personified. The gods are the Elohim of the Hebrew scriptures, wherein it is written of man, I said, ye are gods. To Mercury or Hermes, Hiram, the Egyptians attributed their 42 books of science, embracing astronomy, astrology, arithmetic, geometry, medicine, grammar, logic, rhetoric, music, magic, and so on. Mercury, or Hermes, was the great magician and transformer, bearing the caduceus, or wand of miracles, which survives to this day as a symbol of the healing art. He was, nevertheless, only the messenger of a divinity higher than himself, merely the transmitter, not the originator, the channel rather than the source. Astrologically, the Mercury vibration represents intellect. In the color scale used throughout these lessons, it is yellow, the color assigned to spirit and air, but a deeper tint than that assigned to Uranus. The musical tone is the same, E natural. Beth is one of the seven double letters, so-called because they have in Hebrew both a hard and a soft pronunciation. To every double letter is assigned a pair of opposites. To Beth and Mercury, because the letter and planet designate an aspect of consciousness which destroys as easily as it creates, the pair assigned is life and death. Intelligence of transparency is the mode of consciousness. Transparency means letting light shine through. Here we have the same idea of transmission that is suggested by Hermes as the transmitter of the messages of the higher divinity. Clearly, the mode of consciousness, called transparent, must be one which affords a free channel of communication, which permits the free passage, downward and outward, of the superconscious light, which is above and within. Above is the direction assigned to Beth. Because the mode of consciousness corresponding to the letter is the superior term of human personal consciousness, as Hermes was herald of the gods, directing the soul, according to Egyptian mythology, through the mysteries of the underworld, or night side of nature, so is this superior phase of human personal consciousness the initiator and the conductor of human personality through the mazes of life. It is the number one consciousness, the ego consciousness, the I am I, which is sometimes called objective mind. But because it is first of all consciousness of the indwelling presence of the superconscious self, we prefer to term it self-consciousness. It is the onlooker, the director, the superior personal mode of universal conscious energy. It is your everyday waking consciousness. The magician is the correct title of key one, used in all versions of tarot belonging to occult fraternities, though it is sometimes debased 
into the juggler in exoteric packs. Magic is simply the ancient name for science, particularly for hermetic science. The true magic presides over house building because it shows us how to erect actual houses so as to take advantage of occult properties of the earth currents of magnetic vibration. The higher phases of magic, moreover, have to do with the building of the, quote, house of personality, with the rearing of the temple of spirit, the, quote, house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, end quote. The magic of light presides over life and death because it has to do with laws and principles, whereby self-conscious states of mind initiate and determine subconscious reactions. These reactions make for life or for death, according to the patterns which self-consciousness formulates and passes down to the subconscious plane. Every true magician knows that all his practice has a mathematical, geometrical basis. By the aid of occult geometry, he has traced nature to her concealed recesses. He uses geometrical formulae and diagrams in his practical work. Finally, though he knows himself to be above nature, he understands that his operations succeed to the, to the degree that his thought, word, and action transmit faithfully the powers of the plane above him. The greatest magicians know themselves to be no more than channels for the life power, clear window panes through which the light of wisdom within the house of personality streams forth into the objective world. The arbor of roses over the magician's head corresponds to the letter name, Beth, because an arbor is the simplest type of shelter. Red roses, symbols of Venus, represent the desire nature. Here they suggest that the power which the magician draws from above is modified or qualified by desire. This is true of all self-conscious activity. Every moment of our waking consciousness is motivated and conditioned by some type of desire. The horizontal figure 8 over the magician's head is the ancient occult number ascribed to Hermes. This horizontal 8 is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It means dominion of the horizontal plane, that is, dominion in material affairs, because one of the oldest symbols of matter is is the horizontal line. In contrast to the fool's yellow locks, the black hair of the magician signifies ignorance. Yet this ignorance is limited by knowledge, for a white crown encircles the magus's brow. It passes round his forehead at the location of the brain areas particularly active in self-conscious mentation. His uplifted right hand suggests power drawn from above. The wand it holds aloft is a double-ended phallic symbol. It is phallic because the nerve force used to maintain the reproductive functions may be purified and sublimated by certain magical procedures. The pur purification is suggested by the whiteness of the wand. Its two points, exactly alike in form, remind us of the hermetic axiom, that which is below is as that which is above, and that which is above is as that which is below, for the performance of the miracles of the one thing. They also indicate subtly that the lower manifestations of the force here symbolized are not destroyed nor atrophied in the process of purification and sublimation. Finally, the two points refer to the quality of all magical operations, which are of two great classes, those leading to the higher expressions of life and those resulting in death. The magician's down-pointing left hand symbolizes the direction of power to a plane below. It makes the gesture of concentration. The pointing finger is that attributed to the planet Jupiter. From this finger, palmists judge the degree of a client's powers of leadership and direction. It is the executive and determinative finger. 
The gesture plainly conveys the notion that concentration is the secret of the direction and control of forces below the plane of self-conscious awareness. Of the double gesture made by the magician's hands, Dr. Waite says, quote, This dual sign is known in very high grades of the instituted mysteries. It shows the descent of grace, virtue, and light, drawn from things above and derived to things below. The suggestion throughout is therefore the possession and communication of the powers and gifts of the spirit. End quote. The magician's white inner robe has the same significance as the white garment of the fool. The serpent girdle signifies wisdom the etern and eternity, biting its own tail. Dr. Waite says, quote, Here it indicates more especially the eternity of attainment in the spirit. End quote. The serpent is colored blue-green because it is also a symbol of the serpent force, which is utilized in all magical practice. This force is related to the sign Scorpio, which, in our color scale, is associated with blue-green. The magician's red outer garment represents desire, passion, and activity. Its color is that of the planet Mars, which astrology associates with action and initiative. This red robe has no binding girdle. It may be slipped on or off at the magician's pleasure. This means that self-consciousness may enter into action or abstain from it according to circumstances. Thus, this bit of symbolism is connected with the power of choice or of selection characteristic of self-consciousness. The table before the magician represents the, quote, field of attention in modern psychology. The word table has also affinities in language with the word measurement, inasmuch as to classify and arrange is to tabulate. Note that the corners of the table had to be squared, and that the cylindrical legs, which have capitals like ionic columns, required the use of compasses, and by their capitals suggests the orders of architecture. On the table in front of the magician, writes Dr. Waite, are the implements of the four tarot suits, signifying the elements of natural life, which lie like counters before the adept, and he adapts them as he wills. As elements of natural life, they refer to the fire, wand, water, cups, air, swords, and earth, the coin or the pentacle. They symbolize also the four worlds and correspond to the letters of yod -Heh, vav -Heh. The magician's problem is to arrange them in proper order. In ceremonial magic, these implements are the staff, the cup of libations and divination, the magic sword, and the pentacle or talisman. On the pentacle are written or engraved words, numbers, geometrical figures, and sigils. These are determined by the nature of the magical operation to be affected by the powers they represent. In this instance, the sigil on the pentacle is the pent alpha, the five-pointed star, or pentagram. Of this sign, Eliphas Levi says, quote, the pentagram expresses the mind's domination over the elements, and it is by this sign that we bind the demons of the air, the spirits of fire, the specters of water, and the ghosts of earth. It is the star of the Magi, the burning star of the Gnostic schools, the sign of intellectual omnipotence and autocracy. It is the symbol of the word made flesh. The sign of the pentagram is called also the sign of the microcosm. Its complete comprehension is the key of the two worlds. It is absolute natural philosophy and natural science. End quote. From the foregoing quotation, you may come to understand the nature of the work to which the magician in tarot is directing his powers. Be careful not to take the first sentence of the quotation too literally, there is a meaning behind the surface meaning. Find it for yourself. In practical, everyday life, the implements of the magician are the four life essentials, light, wands, water, the cups, air, the swords, and food, the pentacles. 
The combination of these life essentials in proper order and proportions is the task of every practical occultist. Finally, the four implements correspond to four ancient esoteric admonitions, which sum up the whole practical application of occult law. These admonitions are to one, to will, by the wands, to know, by the cups, to dare, by the swords, and to be silent, by the pentacles. The last, in some respects, is the most important. Occult means hidden, and one of the first duties of a practical occultist is the pract practice of silence. The magician's garden is the antithesis to the barren height, whereon stands the fool. The garden is fertile and productive. It is itself a symbol of the subconscious plane of mental activity. From this teeming soil come forth the productions which give shape and form to the ideas of the magician. He is shown as a gardener, like Adam, of whom an old legend says that he was put into the Garden of Eden to grow roses. Like Adam, self-consciousness is the namer of objects. Like Adam, personal self-consciousness is formed by the power of the Lord, who is that which was, is, and shall be. Like Adam, the personal self-consciousness is formed of the, quote, dust of the ground, because self-consciousness is an aggregate of myriads of tiny sense impressions, dust, originating in that cosmic operation of the life power which makes the environment of personality and is the true ground or basis of all self-conscious experience. Beneath, writes Dr. Waite, are roses and lilies, the flos campi and lilium convalium, changed into garden flowers to show the culture of aspiration. Red roses typify Venus and the desire nature. White lilies represent abstract thought, untinged by desire. The roses are developed from the five-petaled wild rose, and thus they symbolize the number five which has for its geometrical correspondence the pentagram. As symbols of desire, they represent that phase of subconscious response to self-conscious direction, which has to do with art, invention, and the adaptation of the principles of abstract truth to practical ends. Because all desires are related to sensation, there are five roses, corresponding to the conventional five senses. Lilies have six petals, and in cross-section their flowers show the hexagram, or six-pointed star, which is the symbol of the macrocosm. Pure science concerns itself with the study of the powers of the macrocosm and with the laws of those powers, because these laws and forces operate in the four worlds or planes mentioned in chapter 1. The number of lilies shown in the picture is four, Thus, all meanings of the letter Beth, the number one, and the symbols of the magician refer to powers of the self-conscious phase of personal mental activity. These powers are directed primarily to the control of forces and things below the self-conscious level. The energy utilized comes from above, from superconsciousness. It is fixed and modified by acts of attention. Concentration is the great secret of the magical art. True concentration is perfect transparency, in which personality becomes a free, unobstructed channel for the passage downward and outward of the superconscious, radiant energy. Herein is the secret of true volition. And Eliphas Levi tells us, quote, All magic is in the will. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time for more from Paul Foster Case's The Tarot, A Key to the Wisdom of the Ages. Mm -hmm.